In our last session, I referred to this passage a couple of times, and I want to read it to you and really reflect on these words from Peter. This is 1 Peter 3.15. But in your hearts, revere Christ as Lord. Always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you to give the reason for the hope that you have. But do this with gentleness and respect. Peter's talking about, about words, about expressing what we believe. It's really talking about engaging in spiritual conversations, talking about your faith. And I know there's some people who love Jesus deeply who say, I'm very comfortable talking about my faith and articulating what I believe. And there's other people who say, that makes me uncomfortable, it makes me nervous, that challenges me. But that's okay. If it makes you uncomfortable, if it makes you nervous, if it feels difficult for you to share your faith, remember that Jesus said, if you want to be my follower, here's all you got to do. Just deny yourself every single day, take up your cross, be willing to die, and follow me. And say, today he didn't call me to die, he just called me to talk about my faith. Uh, it's a challenge for some people, but it's a good challenge. It's a growing challenge. So we're going to talk about spiritual conversations, and again, Peter's so clear, we're always prepared to give an account, a defense, an explanation of our faith to everyone, anyone. Th those are big thoughts. That means it's really part of a lifestyle. It becomes an organic way of living to articulate your faith and talk about it. One of the best ways to do that is start talking about your faith with other Christians. There's lots of Christians who don't talk about their faith much, much with anybody. Why not start talking about your faith and what you believe with Christians who love you and who are safe, and the more you learn to articulate your faith, you can then also do that with non-believers. Also in Acts chapter 4, verses 18 to 20, we read these words. And then they called them in again and commanded them not to speak or to teach at all in the name of Jesus. But Peter and John replied, Which is right in God's eyes, to listen to you or to him? You be the judges. As for us, we cannot help speaking out about what we have seen and heard. Peter and John simply say to these political leaders who are trying to shut them down and get them to stop talking, they say, to listen to you or God, you figure out what's right or wrong. We know for us, we must speak about Jesus. I hope that's your heart, that you say, I have to talk about Jesus. And, and again, organic outreach isn't being irritating and incessantly, you know, chat, 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 push, 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 always Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. But in the right moments, at the right times, you're prepared to articulate your faith, to express what you believe and why you believe it. Now, the reality is, uh, people are more open to spiritual conversations than most of us realize. So many people are so much more open to talk about spiritual things than most Christians realize. Atheists, agnostics, people from other religious backgrounds, People will talk about faith if you're willing to talk and have a conversation that's intelligent, that's kind, that's not overly dogmatic or pushy. And so I want to encourage you to be ready to have those conversations. I remember on a Sunday morning, I had finished preaching and, and I always uh, sit on the edge of the stage and I'm available to talk with people between our services. And a woman came up to me and this is how she started the conversation. She said, I disagree with about 70% of what you said in your message today. That's how she started. Now, as a pastor, uh, she, she wasn't from our church. She was a visitor. She wasn't a Christian. But her opening line was, I disagree with 70% of what you said. Now, in terms of the spiritual conversation, I could either just shut down and think, oh my gosh, she just doesn't like anything I've said. Or what I did was I said, tell me about the 30% you agreed with. And she thought about it. She said, well, I like this and I like this. And we started a conversation. I didn't start with the 70% we disagreed with. I said, talk about what you did agree with. And we had an interesting conversation. Then I said, well, tell me about something that I, I said in the sermon that you disagreed with. And you know, we had a great conversation about that also. I, I didn't need to be defensive. I wanted to be engaged and to talk. After the conversation, near the end, I, I simply said to her, you know, I really think that Shoreline Church is a great place for you to be. Because people can be here and disagree and still love each other. She said, really? I said, absolutely. And I, and I kind of jokingly said to her, if we can't disagree and get along, I'm in trouble because I'm married. And I disagree with my wife. She disagrees with me a lot of times, but we still get along and love each other. We just have disagreements. It's okay to disagree. In our culture, we become so uh, kind of bristly about things that we say, well, I can't really talk with anyone who I disagree with. And we get polarized 
And we need to not be that way. If we're gonna have good spiritual conversations, we have to be comfortable just talking with people and gently, kindly disagreeing about certain things, but finding places of common agreement. We need to learn to have organic conversations. And to do that, we have to know this book. If you wanna have good spiritual conversations, it can't just be my opinion. You have to be able to speak from the Word of God. And even if somebody else doesn't believe in the Bible, they're not a Christian, they don't believe in the Bible, they need to know that you do. And you're not just talking about your own personal feelings about things, you're talking about what you believe the Word of God says. And so we have to be ready and understand that these conversations don't have to be planned. Being prepared to give an account for the hope that's in you, which Peter calls us to do, doesn't mean that it's a memorized speech. We're, prepa we're prepared, but we don't have to plan every conversation. Have you ever had a conversation with somebody who, you know, some of these different religious groups that come knocking at your door, and they want to talk to you about something, and you can tell they're on the script. Well, then there's this, then there's this, and if you ask a question, they fall off the script and they're not quite sure what to say. We don't want to be that way. It's not a script. We're prepared, but it's not a planned conversation because conversations can't be planned. They flow and they move. You have to be ready for that. Also, uh, there, there's, it's a, it's a two-way conversation. It's not just you wanting to unload Christian truth, but you want to hear other people. And then we're going to talk about how do you listen, how do you ask good questions. Well, there's people who will actually look and, and, and have kind of thought about this idea of, you know, if this is the point of becoming a Christian, what leads up to faith? And how do you have those spiritual conversations along the way? Well, one of the people who's done a lot of thinking about spiritual conversations with people who aren't yet uh, Christians is a guy named Tom Rainer. I've mentioned him also in another one, another one of the sessions of this course. Uh, Tom Rainer is a brilliant researcher, a committed Christian, and does a lot of thinking about, about outreach and unchurched people. And so he gives this little scale, and, and you'll, you'll see it in front of you there. Uh, he talks about U5, U3, U1, and then conversion. So the U5 is unchurched people, at a level five of being unchurched, and that A uh, talks about being antagonistic. Those are a, a U5, an unchurched person who's at level five, he says they're just antagonistic. Everything you say they bristle at, they've got their defenses up, they've got thought through things and they're ready to kind of fight against you. And there's some unchurched people that are at that real intense level of resistance. A U3, Tom Rainer would say, is someone who's kind of neutral. Uh, they're not a believer. They're, they're, they're not searching and seeking, they're not antagonistic, but they're just kind of neutral about the whole Christian faith thing. And then a U1 is an unbeliever who's very receptive. They're open to those thoughts, they want to have conversations, they're actually, there's actually a hunger and a spiritual interest there. And when Rainer gives this little scale, it's not to have some kind of contrived you know, terms to use for non-believers, the whole idea is to acknowledge and understand that every person that you know who doesn't yet have a relationship with Jesus is in a different place. They're not all the same. Some are heavily resistant. Some are kind of neutral. Some are actually quite open and hungry. So part of the spiritual conversation journey is to get a sense of where people are at. Are, are they a, a, a U5 person? Are they just gonna fight you every step of the way? It doesn't mean you shouldn't have a conversation, but be aware of that. Are they in a neutral place where, where they're, yeah, if you talk, they'd be open. They're not gonna come searching and seeking. And some people are at a place where they're actually receptive, open, hungry, searching, seeking, asking questions. And you're gonna have a different interaction and different conversation with each different person. And then each individual is unique and different. So again, we're prepared, we're studying, we're looking at the scriptures, we're reading books, we're thinking about outreach, we're praying for the Holy Spirit to work in us. But those conversations are dynamic because every relationship is different and every person's at a different place. So I wanna to think together about how we move forward in these conversations. Uh, one way, and I think one of the most powerful ways to have a spiritual conversation with someone is to share authentically, transparently about our own lives. Sharing from our pain, brokenness, and our fears is a powerful way to have spiritual conversations. You say, well, wait a minute, as a Christian, why am I gonna talk with a non-believer about my pain, my fear, my brokenness, my struggles? Because that's real life. And you know what? God meets us in our pain and meets us in our struggles. And most non-believers may not understand our theology, but if they can understand our lives and how Christ impacts us and that it's real for us, that can have a, be a great witness for that person to hear. I think of a woman uh, named Karen. And Karen was a woman who was serving in a church where I was mentoring the church staff and working with them on organic outreach. And she was telling me about people she was praying for and walking with that weren't Christians. And she told me this fascinating, beautiful story 
about the woman who cut her hair and did her nails at a salon. Now, I don't have lots of uh, outreach opportunities around being in salons, but Karen does, and, and, and so she had been walking alongside of this woman who cut her hair and who did her nails. And she, Karen had been trying to share her faith and articulate her faith and give a testimony and just find ways to walk with this woman. And this woman was very resistant. A couple times Karen had actually said, you know, I'd like to give you a Bible if you'd like a Bible. And she said, no, thank you, no, thank you. Very, very sweet lady, but when it came to spiritual things, she just threw up the defenses and pushed Karen away. And so one day, Karen was going to get her haircut, and shortly before going to get her haircut, I think her haircut her nails done before she went in, uh, she got a call from the doctor. Her daughter had an ongoing health issue, significant health issues. And the doctor said, the cancer's back, there's more tests and surgery, and it was just kind of preparing the way for a long, hard road with her daughter. So she was heartbroken and she was struggling. She thought to herself, I'm not gonna go get my haircut, not gonna get my nails done, not gonna go to the salon, because I don't wanna see this woman because I'm so on the edge of sadness. I want her to see the joy of the Lord. I want her to see me as a victorious, strong Christian. I'm just feeling kind of weak and struggling right now. But she thought, well, I made the appointment. I'll just go to the salon, but I'll put a big smile on and I'll be happy. And she was almost thinking, almost I'll fake it if that's what it takes to show her a joyful Christian. So Karen goes to the salon, she sits down in the chair, and this woman asks her one simple question, how you doing? And Karen told me later, she just began to weep. She just began to weep, she said, oh, my daughter's cancer's back and this is what's going on. And through the whole salon experience, Karen just poured out her brokenness, she poured out her pain, she poured out her struggle to this woman who wasn't spiritually open. What Karen didn't even realize at the moment is as she's pouring out her struggle and her pain, she's just speaking out of her life. She's having a spiritual conversation, she's telling her story. So she's talked about how, I don't know I'd, how I'd make it through all this pain and struggle if it wasn't for my church and these women who pray for me and who walk with me, these people who surrounded me and encouraged me. She, she shared with her, her friend in the salon, that she shared with this woman, I don't know how I'd make it without the scriptures. And she talked about Psalms that she read and how God comforted her heart and gave her strength. She said, I don't know how I'd make it without praying and talking with Jesus. So all through her salon experience, Karen talked about the word of God and the body of Christ and the power of prayer and the comfort of the Holy Spirit. But she was really just talking about her own pain and how God was there in the midst of her pain. She didn't even realize she was being a witness and having a spiritual conversation. She was just sharing her struggle and the presence of God with her in that struggle. At the end of this time, the woman who had said no to getting a Bible, who had been resistant to everything about faith, actually said to her, Karen, um, I think I'd like that Bible now. And she asked Karen to give her a Bible. What happened? Karen shared honestly out of her struggles because in our pain, God's strength is made perfect. In our struggles, the Holy Spirit shows up and comforts us. And I'll tell you something, there's a lot of people around you who are going through pain and struggle and they're doing it alone. They're doing it with no comfort and no strength and no Christian church around them and no spirit of God to fill them because they're, they're not yet followers of Jesus. And you can share in a spiritual conversation that God is with you in the tough times and in their hearts and their minds, they're gonna wonder, could that same God be with me? And that may open the door for the gospel. Also, we can share our uncertainty. Uh, we can talk about how there's things that we just don't know about. There's things that we're not certain about. And we can be honest about that. And a lot of times, followers of Jesus are so afraid to say, I don't know, I'm uncertain. But in the middle of our uncertainty, God comes and comforts us and helps us. So when you're having a spiritual conversation and you're talking with somebody who's not a believer and they say, well, I, you know, I've looked at the Bible and I just don't understand it. And it doesn't make sense to me. It's fair to look at them and say, can I tell you the truth? I'm a committed Christian, and there's times I read parts of the Bible I don't totally get either. I'll, I'll tell people, I'm a pastor, and I'm deeply committed to my faith, but there's some things I don't understand. There's things I'm not totally certain about. There's things I don't have figured out. And that's honesty, and that can drop people's defenses. We're not telling them that to drop their defenses. We're just being honest and saying, I don't have it all figured out, but I do know this. I know God, I know his love, I know his truth. And we operate out of what we do know. In John 9, 25, there's this amazing story of a man who's born blind. Jesus heals him, 
He actually heals them on the Sabbath day, which became a problem for some of the religious leaders, and there was resistance and conflict that came around that. And so the religious leaders come to this man who was born blind, lived his whole life blind, and he's been healed by Jesus. And they say, they say, well, who do you think this Jesus is? You know, and they actually, we, we know he's a sinner. He's, he's not a good guy because he healed on the Sabbath. He healed you on the Sabbath. That makes him a sinner. And look at the response of this man born blind who's been healed by Jesus. John 9, 25 says this. The man replied, whether he is a sinner or not, I don't know. One thing I do know, I was blind, but now I see. That's his witness. That's his testimony. He says, I don't know a lot about Jesus at this point. I know this. I was blind, and now I can see. And because of that, this man put his faith in Jesus. He was willing to say, I don't have it all figured out. And so can you, and so can I. As we think about spiritual conversations, I want to give you some questions that you can ask people that will open the door for great, rich, meaningful conversations about spiritual things. These are, these are questions you should have written down somewhere in your, in your phone, in your purse, on a card in your wallet, or written in your heart. So when you're talking with someone who's not a believer, these are questions you can ask that will open the door for a spiritual conversation. So, six questions. Question number one, what are some of the joys you are experiencing in this season of your life? To look at someone who's not a follower of Christ and say, what are some of the joys in your life right now? And just listen and hear and rejoice with them. And as we talked about in another session, if they share a deep personal joy, you might want to say, hey, can I take a moment and just pray and thank God for that? And that may open that door for an ongoing spiritual conversation. But in the midst of their joys, to acknowledge that they're receiving good things, maybe they may not give praise to God, but say, man, God has been good in your life. And they might say, no, that wasn't God, that was me, but they'll probably just listen and, okay, that's your thoughts, but it'll help them understand that there may be more going on than they realize. Ask people, what are the joys you're experiencing? Here's the second question you can ask. What challenges and struggles are you facing right now? To ask people, what are you going through that's tough? What are your challenges? What are your struggles? Again, it's not a first-time conversation with a, with a stranger. This is somebody you know and you have a relationship with a family member, a friend, somebody you've known over time. And to say, what are the challenges you're facing? And as they share those things, just listen well. And do pray for them quietly on your own, but also offer to pray with them or simply say to them, you know, I'm going to be praying for that. That's really tough. And check in and see how they're doing. People's joys and sorrows are spiritual moments. And if they knew Jesus, they'd walk through both of those with greater strength. Here's a third question. And now we're getting a little bit more in the faith area, an overtly faith-based question. What is your personal history when it comes to faith in God? To ask someone, what, tell me about your personal history and kind of how, what your journey was coming to faith in God. And you're going to get all kinds of responses to the question, what's your personal journey? I asked one guy who I was playing soccer with, and he said, well, I'm kind of a lapsed Jehovah's Witness. And I said, tell me about that. And he shared his story. And he wasn't really following God at that point, but he'd grown up in this, in this unique, uh, really, you know, cult group of Jehovah's Witnesses, but it had brought some pain to him, and, but it opened the door for some amazing spiritual conversations. I've met a lot of people when I say, tell me about your spiritual journey, what, you know, what's been your personal history when it comes to faith in God. I've met people who said, well, I grew up in this kind of church or that kind of church, and it was painful. I mean, people say it was just a hard upbringing. It was legalism. It was rules and regulations. There was no joy. I talked to people who said, I, I experienced abuse in a church context. Now again, for a lot of people, when they think about having a spiritual conversation, their mind is this. Okay, a spiritual conversation is, I tell them about Jesus and they become a Christian. But I want to tell you, a spiritual conversation is a lot bigger than that. Like, like on Tom Rainer's scale, there's different kinds of places people are at as non-believers. And so to say to somebody, tell me about your personal journey, your spiritual journey, your history when it comes to faith in God. Even, even if somebody would have asked me that before I became a Christian, I would have said, I don't really have a personal journey. I could have told him, I remember as a really young boy going to a, some church service with my family in a, an Episcopal church. I remember as a little kid, I had this picture I might have seen this cross on the wall with this guy all bloody hanging on it, and it seemed kind of creepy. And I could tell him just this, my vague memories of a couple of little church connections, but we didn't go to church regularly. There was no faith in my family. But that's my journey. That's my story. If you want to start having spiritual conversations, hear about other people's journey. Here's the fourth question. Short and simple. 
Hey, tell me what you believe about God. You know, what do you believe about God? I don't believe anything. I'm an atheist. But that tells you something. It opens the door for conversation. I'm not sure if God's real. That tells you something. Somebody might say to you, you know, I'd, I'd really like to believe in God. I'd, really, I'd like to believe there's something more out there. I'm just not sure how to get there. Man, that opens the door. You can talk to them about how to get there. When you, ask, when you ask somebody, what do you believe about God? If they, say, if they say something that you go, well, man, that's just, you know, they, they, they may say, well, I believe that I'm God. You go, well, I don't want to hear that. No, that's a spiritual conversation. You say, really? You believe you're God. Tell me more about that. Man, one of the best things you can say when you're having a spiritual conversation is tell me more about that. Tell me more about that. How does that work? What does that mean to you? And listen. Sometimes we're just afraid to have these ongoing conversations or we think we have to correct people's wrongness. We don't. Talk, listen, keep your heart open. Here's another great question as a Christian for you to ask a non-believer. To say, hey, what's your perception of Christians? And be ready for anything and everything. What's your perception of Christians? Some Christians don't want to ask that because they don't want to hear. But again, don't be defensive. Just listen. So maybe somebody says, you know, my perception of Christians, most of the Christians I've met seem like really nice people. Really? What do you think makes them nice? Why do you think they're so nice? Someone else might say, you know, what's your perception of Christians? Oh, man, they are closed-minded, hate-mongering bigots. Interesting. Tell me more about that. Really? Have you met some of that, people like that? Well, I've heard a lot about them. I, I've watched some YouTube things on YouTube. This, this one guy that I've been listening to says that all Christians, they want to, you know, they, they just hate everyone who's different than them, and they're down on sex, and they're closed-minded, and, and I'm watching these YouTube videos, or I've listened to this person give a lecture, or this teacher I had in college said this. So, well, but what's your experience been? Well, I guess I haven't run into that many Christians that are hateful and mean, but I mean, I've heard that there's lots of them out there. Well, that's interesting. It's a spiritual conversation. Uh, what, when you ask that question, you're, you're, you have to be willing to hear the answer. And don't defend all Christians. Because honestly, some Christians are doing things that aren't defensible. Just listen and hear. And what it does is it opens the door for you to have a spiritual conversation. One more question you can ask. What do you believe about Jesus? You know, have you ever thought about Jesus? What do you believe about Jesus? A guy named Dan Kimball wrote a really uh, interesting book called uh, They Like Jesus But Hate the Church. And, and it, the, the premise is, is pretty obvious by the book title. He says there's lots of people out there that really have an affection for Jesus and think well of Jesus. They're not just not really on to what the church is about. And, and so, so if, you, if you say to somebody, what do you believe, believe about Jesus? They might say, well, yeah, I, think he was a, I think he was a great guy. I think he's a wonderful moral teacher. Don't respond by saying, no, he wasn't. He was the son of God. Don't, don't be defensive. Just say, really? What are some of his teachings that you find interesting? Well, I don't know. I think, you know, he talked about loving people. Yeah, he did. You know, have you ever read the Bible where it talks about how Jesus loved people and called us to love one another? No, I really haven't. W w would you like to? I, I could get you a copy of the Bible. We could read it together. I could, you know, I could show you where, you know, if you say you really like Jesus and you find him interesting, have you read his story? And say, so, you know, and the nice thing about Jesus' story, there's four versions of it called Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. They're all really short. I mean, you, you could read the whole story of, of Mark in a couple hours. It's not a book that you have to spend, you know, days reading. It's a pretty easy read. But, but you're asking the question, what do you believe about Jesus? And then somebody else says, well, I think Jesus was, you know, closed-minded and mean-spirited. Really? Where do you get that impression? Well, I, I, just, I just think that's what it was. Well, you know, would you like to look at the Bible and see what the Bible says about him? Because the, the, really the main place we have information about Jesus is the Bible. And that's the source. Let's see what it says. But it opens the door for a spiritual conversation. Those are questions you can ask and other questions you can come up with on your own. But don't be nervous or afraid. Open yourself and walk joyfully into spiritual conversations. Learn to listen well. A conversation works like this. And I've met too many people when it comes to outreach or evangelism, they think it's me unloading a script and giving them my message or, or even you know, God's message. But the thing is, I'm, I listen as much as I have to and then I just want to jump into, boom, here's the story. Do you want Jesus? Yes, great, you're in the club. No, I'm done with you. Don't do that. Walk with people, love people, have ongoing, growing conversations about spiritual things. And that means you listen to them, to their input, to their thoughts, and you have an actual conversation. Don't be defensive and don't be dogmatic. Don't feel like you have to defend yourself 
Even don't feel like you have to defend God. Don't feel like you have to defend the church. Just talk and don't be dogmatic. When I say dogmatic, what I mean is, is don't be so rigid in your beliefs that if they disagree with you or your theology, you're saying that's wrong, I'm right, that's wrong, I'm right. In a conversation, now you can say in a conversation, wow, I don't see it that way at all. So you ask somebody, what do you believe about Jesus? And they say, well, you know, I think Jesus was this weak, uh, you know, kind of, uh, you know, wandering through the ancient world, you know, didn't make sense, didn't really, you know, didn't really care about people. And you go, wow, man, I don't see Jesus that way at all. And I've read the stories about all the stories about him in the Bible. I've read them all really closely. And I think Jesus comes across very different than that. They may say, really? So yeah, I mean, I, I just, man, there's almost nothing in the Bible that reflects what you're describing. Would you like to, would you like a copy of the Bible? Can we, can we read it together sometime and just talk about it? Because man, that's, I, I think maybe you got the wrong impression of who Jesus really is, but, but it opens the door for com conversation. Another thing in these spiritual conversations, be truly curious. In another one of the sessions I shared about, about Ancha, uh, this, uh, this communistic, atheistic humanist, who ran this camp to keep young high school age kids from becoming Christians. I mean, she was really against Christians. And yet when I first met her and she began to tell me her story, I was incredibly curious. And she actually, I, I shared with you that she, she responded by saying, you know, when she found out I was a Christian pastor, why didn't you tell me that I'm going to hell and that I'm wrong? And I told her, cause I, I think you're fascinating. I was just listening to your story. But I was asking her, well, tell me, what do you mean when you say, you say you're a humanist? Tell me more about that. What, when you're a communist, tell me about your, your understanding of communism. When you, what's your understanding of Christians and why you are trying to protect young people from the Christianity that's coming in to your part of, your, of the country? And, and, and I just asked a bunch of questions and I found out she had a really tender heart and a real deep love for people and a lot of confusion about what Christians were really about. I would have never gotten there if I started unloading a Bible script on her or tried to just give her the gospel. But I just, at, I was curious about this woman and about her background, about how she got to her conclusions. And before I told her any of my thoughts, I wanted to get to know who she was. Be truly curious. And one more thing, share your journey and your outlook on faith. In your conversations, talk about your journey. And we'll talk more about that in the next, in the next session about t sharing your testimony. But talk about your journey with Jesus, who he is to you, how you love him, like, like Karen shared with the woman in the salon, how he's with you when you're hurting and struggling. Share your story. Share how Jesus brings hope when you feel hopeless. Share how Jesus brings love and strength to care for people that are difficult. Share your journey of faith, not just how you became a Christian, but, but how you walk with Jesus day by day. Because a lot of people who are non-church, non-believers, they don't understand that our faith is real. They think we're doing church, we're doing religion. They don't understand that God transforms our lives. God helps us through the tough times. God brings us joy in times of sorrow. God brings us hope when we're hopeless. God gives us strength when we feel weak. And when they hear your story, what happens is people start thinking, man, I wish I had what you have. I wish if, you know, if there is a God and that God really helps you through tough times, or if that God really gives you direction when you're confused, if that God gives you hope in the darkness, man, I'd like to know a God like that. How are they going to hear about him if we don't share our stories? And that happens in the flow of normal conversations. So utilize some of the questions you've gotten. Ask good questions of others. Listen well to them. Walk with them. And as God opens the door for spiritual conversations, walk through that door. And you know, if that door is closed, wait for another opportunity. It'll, it'll open again. With people I've been walking with for, for a month, for a year, for 10 years, for 35 years, in some cases, I've had dozens and dozens and dozens of spiritual conversations. And some go really well and seem to progress, and some don't go really well, but that's okay. They're conversations. Keep your heart open, let God use you, and you'll be amazed at how that prepares you for what we're gonna talk about in, in, in session 12 and session 13, about sharing your story, your testimony, and sharing his story, the gospel. That'll be coming at you soon.